Robin Swimshow. Guys, it's Isaac Thorne. Isaac. Isaac Thorne, how are you, my What's going friend? On? All right, how are you guys? I, 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 I'm drinking a beer here uh, in your honor so I could cry in it at the uh, end of the, uh, the segment here. Yeah, that's what we do, do afterwards. You don't let them see because uh, you're a showman, but you just do it afterwards when you're alone and, right. and pantless. <laughs> did, pantless. Did you hear that, uh, that extra voice in the studio with us today? Um, <laughs> Isaac, you have a big fan in, in the studio with us. Slambo back? Yes, yeah. it is me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he got over his fear of the, of the. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know why. We never found out why he really left us, Isaac. Oh, just awesome. <laughs> he just abandoned us, and he was like, and then he's like, I'm back. <laughs> right, I'm here. He's gonna do one last. We asked him earlier, here. though, like what was his favorite thing about the show and he brought up you and he didn't even know that yeah. you were on oh, yeah. tonight and he said no, you, you can tell him you're, oh, yeah, you're I'm, the I'm, fair boy I, I, I love the I, I read I went got around to reading uh, Gordon Place and the uh, Road Kills absolutely oh, loved nice. all of it loved it thank you <laughs> thank I, you very much I, 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 I want more of the thorny verse <laughs> yeah, that's what he said he needs more thorny verse Isaac <laughs> yeah, yeah there's more thorny verse coming uh, uh uh, Hell Spring is coming out this fall, so, uh, so yes, yeah, there's, there's more thorny verse on the way. That's what I didn't know, Isaac. I didn't know if you had a, a, a time frame yet for when Hell Spring was coming out. It's um, like a, a prequel to the Gordon Place. Line, really? It is. It is in the same universe. It's not a direct prequel, but okay. but it is. It is in the same universe. Same small town. Um, uh, about 64 years before the events of the Gordon Place. Um, so yeah, I've got uh, I've got it out to an editor right now, and um, once all that process is done, I'll be putting it up for pre-order in July, and hopefully it'll be uh, on sale and available in September. Awesome, awesome. Because I remember uh, some of the last times we spoke, I think you weren't as on track uh, uh, with it as you thought. So that sounds like it's almost complete then. Yeah, yeah, it's it's getting really close. I uh, I actually started on this one way back in 2019, and um, uh, you know, with with COVID happening and and everything going on in the world, I I was like I was going through some. Um, uh, some hard motivational times, you know, it was kind of hard to, to sit down and, and, um, uh, get my head into this one at first, but, uh, late last year, it finally, finally, uh, connected with me and I, I knocked out the, uh, the whole rest of the thing. So that's great. So yeah, it's moving along. Is there anybody that connects with the other Gordon plays like a, a relative of any characters? There is a, uh, family. Yes. Okay. That connects with a um, probably call him a minor character in the the Gordon place. You remember the um, uh, Ghostbusters cosplayer? That's what I was. Uh, that's the first one that came yeah. to mind. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So yeah, yeah, he has some relatives that that uh, show up in Hellspring. Nice. Some uh, ancestors, I guess. <laughs> Great. Is that why you left the Slambo? You're going through some stuff and turmoil and just yeah, couldn't focus. I mean, there was some, there was some bullshit. <laughs> He's wearing the Robin Slim sh shirt too, Isaac. Like I just, I, I can't get over it. I can't get over it <laughs> that he still has it. How snug it is on him. He's it it's is just very snug. <laughs> so is that because he missed you, or is he, or is he kissing your ass? Then? Uh, it's it's definitely some of all. But he wouldn't do the. I had a bit in mind. He wouldn't do. He wouldn't do the one stunt. He wouldn't do that goddamn stunt I wanted, which I was gonna bare bottom stun gun him, oh, but he's. Yeah. He's uh, pussed out. He's pussed out. <laughs> I've been electrocuted before. I mean, yeah, I'm just, that's. I'm I, I didn't see that, and it didn't happen on the show, unfortunately. So uh, if, if it had, I would have been like, okay, I'll let it pass. But I'm pretty pissed. Pretty pissed. I was like, wink. <laughs> oh goddamn! Oh, but it is it's it's bittersweet isaac you uh, i definitely have to point out you uh and you've also listened to the show over the years you know how yeah how some relationships can turn 
Uh, and you just, we've never butted ads. We've always uh, been uh, great communicating on the air and off off the air. Like, you're just, you're an awesome guy, man. I uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I'd, I've been listening to the show since, uh, I guess, 2016. I was going to say, I feel around so, the first time we had you on, or around that is when you started yeah. listening, and I, I appreciate it so much. I appreciate you even um, uh, sometimes... Like uh, messaging me like, oh, this one part or whatever it, it isn't uh, <laughs> isn't up to par. So yeah, that's cool too to to have somebody that lets you know when something's up. So thank you. Yeah, dude. absolutely. And absolutely. Slim, fuck you for fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac's been calling I'm out all my mistakes yeah. over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping Slim in line. That episode. What's I that? Playing that episode, and I was like, "Wait a minute, this sounds familiar." Yeah, I, was, I don't know what I did. <laughs> he just re-uploaded an old episode, and I hope nobody would notice. Know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because I saved the old, fi- the new file as the name of like an old file, and then I forgot what folder I put it in. I, I also love every time he uploads one. Is I feel like it's the same name, and I feel like, yeah, how can you keep track of this shit? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised. I've done at least I've done at least one other uh, podcast. It was actually a radio show that that they then um, uh, put up as a podcast later. Um, and I I did their radio show during a stormy night, just like the one I'm I'm having tonight. And something happened at the station, and they actually lost that show so so there is a lost episode of an interview with me out there there uh somewhere or not out there as the case may be uh, yeah so, so besides that show are we your only podcast Ooh. no i've done um i've done several um over the years uh you were you guys were among the first cool so I did uh, the very first one i did was a show called uh talk to cleo that is um uh, not on anymore and uh, I think you guys were really close on the heels of that because I, I think you, you had Bleeding Critic on, and then I came on shortly after that. Yeah, we were talking about him earlier, too. Like, uh, over the years, I, I feel, I think I reached out to him once or twice, and he's just been, he was too busy to come on. Like, Yeah. Yeah, he's a busy busy guy. Busy is, he, is he still around? He's still doing his thing? Yeah, I don't see his uh, his... Uh, reviews as often as I used to on my social media feeds, but uh, every now and then I'll see one come across there or, or get his email newsletter um, with uh, with a new review in it. So he is still doing it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's good to hear because, yeah, last I had seen he was still doing it, so that's cool. He was a great yeah. dude. Isaac, would you be able to read us something for our last, our last hurrah? Absolutely. I've got a little bit of chapter 23 of Hell Spring I, I want to read for you. And this is one of the chapters that has not come back from, um, from the editor yet, so it might be changed in the final product. But, um, but this is what I have right now. So very early sneak peek of chapter 23 of Hell Spring, and I'm ready when you guys are. All right, I'm going to mute the mics on whenever you're ready. All right. Let's go. Buster McNath was already pissed off when he sank ankle deep in the mud outside Ted Gilliam's home that night. It hadn't been pouring when he had left the job site to pay the lazy bum a visit he really couldn't afford. He could barely see through the sheets of water falling from the skies. The trip down the backwoods lane to Ted's house had been easy enough for his pickup. He hadn't expected the ground to be so soft and deep, though. Water brimming with clumps of saturated earth poured into a hole in the sole of his boots. He aimed the beam of his rayovac at his feet and groaned. God damn it, Buster gruffed. Those Montgomery Ward's powerhouse boots were practically brand new. He had already cussed that dumb son of a bitch, Roy Robinson, for dropping planks nails up where people have to walk. While eyeing the oncoming weather, Buster had stepped on a protruding nail and driven it entirely through the sole. He'd been lucky, however. The tip of it had only penetrated the space right, be- right between his first and second digits. Should have fired Roy's ass for that, but Buster already had too much on his mind. The wet sock inside his boot was the final straw. If he'd had any inklings about a change of heart when he'd arrived outside Ted's house, they were gone. He was going to get fired tonight. The mud yanked at his boot as he wrenched it free. 
He shook that foot wildly in front of him, trying to rid himself of the annoying slosh in the mock toe. The ooky stuff had found its way inside easily enough, but it wasn't keen to leave. Shit, Buster mumbled. Forget it. He glared at the front door of Ted's house, which bizarrely was standing partially open, despite the nasty wind and rain. It creaked on its hinges with each powerful gust, and then slowly returned to its original angle, not quite closed, but not entirely open. Damn thing's not plumb, he said, just like Gilliam. Should have fired him a long time ago. He stormed to the door and pounded three times on the facing with the ball of his right fist. Gilliam, where you at, boy? It's Buster. He waited. The only response was the driving rain pouring from the gutters on each side of the front porch. Mrs. Donna, he called, softening his tone a bit. It's Buster McNath. Ted didn't show up at the job site today. Any idea where he is? No reply. Buster sighed. Well, now you're going to go and make me feel bad about firing you if something's happened to you. Ted, he tried once more. When that produced no response, Buster placed a palm on the front door and pushed it inward. He stepped across the threshold into total darkness. With the fingers of his left hand, he fumbled for a light switch on the interior wall. He found one and flipped it up. Nothing. Power must be out. This just gets better and better, don't it? Suddenly glad he hadn't left the flashlight in the truck, Buster aimed it into the rooms beyond him and scanned from right to left. No sign of life. He had walked into what looked like a living area, a kitchen open to the right. A hallway in the back of the room led into darker depths that the beam of his rayovac wouldn't reach. Ted? Mrs. Donna? He treaded cautiously through the living area. The bedrooms were probably in the back of that hall. Buster had never made a habit of walking into folks' houses without an invitation, much less their bedrooms, but something about the quiet here wasn't sitting right with him. He wondered whether Ted missed work for some reason besides being a lazy good-for-nothing drunk who probably belonged in a prison pulling levers on a license plate press more than he belonged on a construction site with a saw in his hand. The first door he arrived at was on the right side of the hallway. Buster peered in without stepping through, shining his flashlight in every corner. This must be the nursery. Baby Gilliam's cribs stood against the far wall. Beside it sat a rocking chair with a small blue blanket draped over one arm as if waiting for mother and child to return. The room was stacked with stuff mothers require for baby care, at least as Buster understood it. There was no indication that the family had packed up and left town. He backed out of the room and turned to examine the door on the left side of the hallway. This one was closed. Ted? He knocked on it and waited. Silence. The, the doorknob felt weird in his grip. A shiver of either fear or excitement crept from his balls and into his belly when he turned it and pushed the door. He trailed the beam of its flashlight over what looked like drops of black and dried up liquid on the floor. He followed their trail to the rear wall of the room, where sat a bloated and milky-eyed Ted. Rain poured through a busted window above him, soaking his hair and running down the sides of his face like water from a shower head. The window had shattered when a tree had uprooted and crashed into the house, thanks to the saturated ground surrounding it, no doubt. The corpse's head was cocked to one side. The puffy purple bags under his eyelids drooped over ashen cheekbones. His jaw was slack. He had a questioning look as if he'd awakened from a nice, normal nap seated against the bedroom wall in a pool of his coagulated blood, only to find himself drenched in rainwater while his boss stood over him. He looked like he was about to ask Buster what had happened and what the hell he was doing there. He wore a surreal man-in-the-moon expression on his face. It would have been funny if it wasn't so abjectly terrifying. A jagged line was carved into the soft flesh of Ted's second chin, which was more prominent than usual thanks to the way his slump against the wall bent his neck forward. To Buster, it looked like the blood of four or five men Ted's size had poured out of that wound, painting the man and everything under him in the viscous oil of life. Buster's heart throbbed in his temples. The pain broke his paralysis, enabling him to think again. It must have been a break-in, possibly even a robbery and kidnapping. Whoever had killed Ted had taken his wife and brat along with them to, well, God knew where. Or Donna and the kid were still hiding somewhere in the house. Oh, shit, he thought. The robbers could still be here, too. He was suddenly aware that he was utterly alone on a stormy night in an unlighted and unfamiliar house turned crime scene. Buster decided to scan the room as quickly as possible, then retreat to his pickup. He could drive down to Beards and call the constable from there. 
if the power was out, it was a safe bet that the telco's party line was down as well. That was if Ted even had a telephone hookup. Buster had never needed to call him before. Except for the corpse, the main bedroom was empty. Buster tried to leave the room without turning his back on Ted. He was a grown man. He'd seen dead people before. He knew better than to think one could sneak up behind him when he wasn't looking. All the same, the prospect didn't feel quite so far-fetched as it would if he'd been standing there on a balmy day in the middle of the morning. A lamp that sat beside an alarm clock on the couple's nightstand flared to life. Buster yelped in surprise. The surge of fresh electrical current through the bulb created a bright burst of light in his eyes like a newspaper photographer's camera flash. The glow settled into a steady burn that shone in beams from the top and bottom of the shade, creating an hourglass shape. It steadied bright, it steadied bright enough to illuminate all but the farthest corners of the bedroom. Buster cut his eyes to the dead man, who had risen from his slump against the wall. The end. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. That'll be out this fall, you said? Yep, uh, probably the uh, uh, middle to last third of, of September is what I'm aiming for. Cool, cool. What did you, you read the Gordon Place, Slava? Gordon Place and I did yeah. road, road Kills, which I really enjoyed both. And Slim probably hasn't read none of it. I think he read some of his Road I Kills. I read a couple of Road Kills. Yeah. I was trying to see, because I usually have a copy of Road Kills like, laying around. Oh, that's what you were looking uh, creepily I know. For? I was looking <laughs> creepily for it. Where me and Slambo wanted... started looking. Yeah, he I'm was like, like, staring <laughs> over in the corner. I was trying to find, to see where it was, because I was going to ask, like, I thought it would be funny to have Slambo read, like, a passage from your book to close <laughs> off. That's what I want to ask, though, Isaac. Uh, totally off topic. As an author, I don't know if you've ever heard uh, our, our guy, the Driz, read some Ramsey Swice book. I didn't know if you had any advice for him as an author. From one author to another, quote, er, author. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I've, uh, I've started to not hand out advice un unless the other author asks me something very, very specific. Ah. Because... It, it's a different journey for for everybody, and yeah. you know, there are some similarities among everyone. But as far as how to write and <clears throat> and what to write and and things like that, I, I can't tell you that. I you just know? feel like he could use sentences instead <laughs> of just fragmented words here. I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on through that mind of his. <laughs> but uh, it's weird because there's like, chapters and like the back of the book has kind of a story that the book is supposed to be I about. I kind of feel like there's there. a jingle bell or a packing peanut instead of a brain in there. I, I kind of feel so <laughs> I, that's that's my re critique. <laughs> I'll give it freely. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but isaac i don't know uh, i i i i know i've said um this past season that i wasn't a super huge fan of the last rick and morty season from the ones i saw but i went back i rewatched the ones i didn't see and i feel like i caught the worst episodes like the ones i saw that i didn't originally see like i do i did like yeah yeah which uh, which one was your favorite? There was one I was trying to think of, um, that I think was the the last season, the most recent one, and it was like this this really uh, meta episode, and I can't remember what happened now because I the only one that sticks in my head now is the last one I saw, which was the the one where they break time, because hmm. um, yeah. it reran the other night. What was the one that I didn't mind and I thought I was going to hate it because I didn't like the other episodes along that line? I think the one with the Voltron one I did like. <laughs> I did like. And um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I originally had heard the, the horse uh, uh, semen one wasn't was really crude, but I did. I really enjoyed that one, too. Like So the ones I didn't see, I ended up loving. And the, I think the last two, uh, Slim had shown me. The the crow man that the just crow cool, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. crow I love yeah. crow horse the, the, yeah the crows the two crows loved it yeah <laughs> the Rick and two crows episode yeah yes. I did like those I did like those yeah so I did see that you're you're on Kindle uh, 
Isaac, so I do oh. have a patches of uh, Rogue Kills if you want to hear Slambo read, like, the first paragraph of Because Reasons. As what character? Oh, I, absolutely. <laughs> as what character, though? He's got plenty of characters. He's got plenty of characters. I feel so. like it's your call, Isaac. As, as original Slambo, as Doc, uh, Minotaur, Rapestein, uh, he does gerbil voice, he does... <laughs> what other voice? Uh, Wavy? You know what? what? Whatever is his most a uh, female voice because that Ooh. story is is um, is all from uh, Tiffany's perspective. I'm there. saying gerbil. Oh god! And what's his other? Yeah, Slambo oh, or Doc? There, there's also uh, Mr. Burlington. Oh, oh you Burlington, Burlington is soft spoken. <laughs> yeah, yeah Ron reads. Good old Ron. <laughs> all right. Well, hey y'all, welcome to another episode of uh, Mr. Burlington. Read your bedtime stories. And tonight, we gonna read because reasons. Well, hello there, sleepyhead. I didn't expect you to wake up so soon. You must not have been as wasted as I thought you were. No, don't try to talk. I've tried that, I tied that strap tight. Ever had a ball in your mouth before? I bet not. You look like an alpha type. At least you think of yourself as one. Usually the kinks who like the straps will tie them behind their, your head. I stretched this one way out so I could tie it behind you. You know, around the headrest, but I'll bet you can't even move your head right now. Go ahead. Try to look at me. Yeah, that's what I thought. Can't move much more than your eyes right now, can you? Good. The way I cuffed your hand so the frame of that seat should keep you from making any one wanted advantage is should we meet any other drivers out here. Did I say advances? I made advances. Ha! I meant signals. I don't want you to be able to signal anybody. If we met, meet anybody? Not that I think we will. This stretch of desert is pretty well empty in the wee hours of the morning, I think. My daddy used to drive out here sometimes because it's so far away from everything. To get his head on straight, he said, I think he might have just been hooking up, horny bastard. So, uh, I don't much know, I don't know you much remember. My name is Tiffany. Your name doesn't matter. We met in the bar just about six hours back. <clears throat> you were pounding the drinks pretty hard, and I'm sure... Undressing me with your eyes in the mirror. Do you remember that? Not if you can. Yeah, hey, remember I said unwanted advances? Freudian slip. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see me from your angle, but I was a little hottie sitting at the table right behind you. Remember? You thought you were so cool sitting on that boss doing eyeballing me in the mirror. You guys, you don't get it. Girls like me know when you're getting all predatory. It's like a pheromone, you admit, like armpit stank. And we know how you used to use that against you if uh, we really want to. Oh, don't look so shocked. Let's just be honest. You know I'm a hearty. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! That's great. <laughs> My fucking face hurts from laughing so much. I feel like you, you could have uh, uh, another oh. audio book right there. Oh god! <laughs> that has to be that has to be the most unique Tiffany voice I have ever heard. What would you tell him if he auditioned? What would you tell him if he auditioned for the part, Isaac? If, if he auditioned for it, I, I would. Uh, you know what? I, I would I would let him down easy. <laughs> I, would, I would let him down easy. <laughs> hey, for effort. But, but oh, because he's a fan. Because he's a fan. Because, <laughs> um, but that that part has has been played by three different people. Um, uh, Leanne Moonraven did it for a radio play. Um, uh, Carol. Um, uh, Jacobinus did it for uh, the Road Kills audio book, and uh, uh, Crystal West played her in the short movie that My Little Rascal Productions 
yeah. made. Um, and, and they all have a slightly different take on it, but I, I think I think Flambeau's was the most unique. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it kind of had vibes of, like, creepy redneck, though. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it was almost very scary, actually. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Isaac, I can't believe it's time already, but thank you, as always. You're, you're one of the best. Absolutely. Thank you guys for, for having me on so many times. And uh, and I'll miss the show, but uh, but all my best to uh, to what's next. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely miss talking to you. And if we ever do pop up with like any extra like show here and there, you'd be one of the first people I'd contact. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a great night, guys. You too, Isaac. Too. And it's on. Isaac Thorne, uh, T-H-O-R-N-E dot com, correct? Yes. Awesome. Take care, Isaac. <laughs> 